Hi there YouTube, it's Clormo with part 5B of the Logic Pro X tutorial series on making sample beats. And this one is EXS24 for drums, using the EXS24 sampler to create your drums. Just as a little recap, part 5A, uh, we sample drums from either Logic's own extensive sound library or your own custom sound libraries to extract your your drum sounds and then put those on a beat right which is a very simple way of creating or laying drums on a beat uh, in this one we're gonna go a little bit more in depth in the in the sampler and how to to put sounds in it and then from there creating your own beats just as another recap part one through four mentioned briefly the EXS24 sampler I bring it up here and there but uh, if you haven't looked at those, you're welcome to do so just to get an overview of how it's used in those ones. And as with everything, the the settings and the commands being discussed here don't know, only apply to just drum sounds. They can be used for any sound that you can load up into your, your sampler. So keep that in mind that as I go through it, you can use these uh, everywhere in other sounds, okay? Not just for, for drums. So let's start here with the tutorial. Let's go into the into logic right now. I want to recap first how to add some, you know, your your samples into the ESX24. Some stuff that I have done before. I have right here a an Apple loop already that's uh, two bars long with the with a beat on it. Let's take a quick listen to it. And that's at 89 BPM. Let's say that I want to get the all those sounds that I have in that beat and include them in a sample for for use later. The simplest way is I just select the 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 sound file and I right click and I go to convert to new sample track. And then here in the settings, I will select transient markers and. I can name it whatever I want. I will I will name it part 5B example one. And then my, my trigger note range will be the zones that the transients will produce. So in this in this uh, example is 19 zones, so I press OK. And it will create a second track with the name that I gave it, and it already gives me the play right of the different notes it's just just the example and then if i go to the exx24 and i go to edit i see all my my samples in there based on the file name of the actual uh, sound file that i used and then if you play that around i'll bring this track a little bit down so it doesn't clip So that's all the sounds that were in that uh, in that uh, Apple loop there, the drum loop. I can save that. I can edit it by uh, reversing some of the sounds or just uh, eliminating some of them. You, you, you notice that some of them re pretty much sound the same. So you can do whatever you want once you have here and uh, you have the different transient sounds in here. So you effectively just sampled this original Apple loop into your own sampler. So what you can do from there is also, uh, once you uh, edit it and either add some EQing and some other effects here, you can then go to the setting and then you can save that channel strip setting as something else. So you can save your own instrument and call it some something like drum kit one or whatever you want and then it will retain everything that you do in your track in, if, as far as uh, F MIDI effects and other effects and EQing. So that's a simple way of creating or adding samples to ESX24. I will undo all of that. But let's say that you want to start with a clean ESX24. All you do is go to create, add a new instrument, 
I'll make sure it's a software instrument and then in the instrument drop down you select ESX24 make sure that you don't have the open library check because that way when you create it will just open the library and it's not uh, I guess it's a little bit distracting it's not needed for for what we're doing here so once I hit create it will create a new track with a clean ESX24 sampler notice that I don't have anything here if you just have three dashes because there's no instrument loaded or any source loaded like in the when I did it with uh, sampling the the loop right it, it gave the name here that I already gave it but it's the same thing I will go to from here go to edit and there's two ways of doing this you can go to zone and then go to load multiple samples and from here We'll go to the desktop to this folder that I have already created with all the samples. And let's say I want to add them all. If I select them all and hit add, you see it brought them down to this window. And if I hit done, it will put all the those those sounds there. But I will I won't do that because it if you refer back to part 5A I did kind of similar thing so that's already done what I really wanted to show you is the second way of doing it you go to your your file browser and once you're in your file browser you can navigate to the same folder in this case is that sample for tutorials and you can either grab one sound and drag it to a note or you can select multiple and also drag them and then if I do that it's gonna bring up these this other dialog here and ask me if I wanna just have contiguous sounds so it's gonna go one by one and add in them and they're gonna be one note zone so that's gonna be their default length so if I do okay it it pretty much did the same thing that it would have done if I went to multiple songs and hit done so it, it, it added all of those in sequence now if I click here to close it's gonna ask me to save it I'm not gonna save it for for now because I what I want to do is go in again and show you something else it's just I'm just gonna bring this kick and then so that's how that kick goes now by default, if you noticed, I dragged it. It made it just one one note. The, the the note the sound length was just one note. If I brought all the sounds, you saw that it brought that uh, dialog box and asked me if I wanted to make them one sound in length, and I said yes. So if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to have your your sound be more than one note in length and then that way affect the pitch of it what you can do is either when you drag everything in that dialog box that you saw you, you could change it to to be more than one zone in length or you can just come down here to the sample that you just dragged and for a lack of a better word you can drag it across multiple zones you can, can even go all the way over here and what that's going to do it's this so you notice how the pitch is going up as I go up in the different octaves right or the different um, semitones going from one octave to the other so that's uh, another thing that I wanted to stress out when using the sampler for, for your drums is that you don't need to box yourself up with just using one zones for your different drum sounds and you can alter some of them to be able to play at different pitches that same sound that's going to come in handy with with trap hats for example and with anything like other than drum sounds that you want to have played at different pitches for example if i dragged a one of these other sounds here which is not a drum sound and I drag that let's say all the way up to here to C4 
That's like a mallet type of sound if I... If I wanted to make, let's say, a, a standalone instrument of just that sound, I can do it by dragging that along and then I can start playing different notes and different chords from just one sound and they're gonna sound with a different pitch and effectively I will create a different instrument when we're since we're talking about drums right when I'm dragging multiple drum samples here all I'm gonna end up doing like I said when I explain how to save your uh, your patch it's creating pretty much a, a, your own drum kits so this is a very good way of creating your own drum kits and saving them and having them available from the sampler itself in this case which is the what we're using to create these new uh, instruments so from there I'm just gonna close this and then let's see now I don't want to save it yet so last but not least that I wanted to show for the ESX24 itself I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna load this snare sound and that I'm gonna save I'm gonna save it as part 5b I already had something saved there when I was doing my takes so for now I just have that that uh, that little snare sound in there and now I just uh, I just turned on my MIDI controller so that's why you saw that that screen there so for now I found there my snare sound on my BD keyboard let's say you wanted to also fine-tune the pitch and these the overall sound of that sample and you didn't want it to do it here or you forgot or you just just don't want to do it here you want to keep this as clean as possible with just one one zones for your sounds you have these settings up top here that pretty much work for that they will this on this top portion here would be your tuning and pitch settings and then this down here would be your modulator settings I just want to make a note that I'm not gonna go into each single parameter in this video because we I want to keep it for how to use the sampler to create and your own drum kits and drum sounds and how to lay out some some drums itself but I just wanted to um, give you an overview because in other videos that I have seen talking about how to load samples and all that stuff in here they don't people don't don't really talk about what you can do here and I think it's very important to know it's that for one from here you can tune by semitones so if I just give it a try you notice that that snare sounds changing as I go up and then fine tune here we do it by sense which is similar approach right and then all these other settings here will help you to alter the the pitch and fine tune your your sound if it were out of tune in the case of something other than than a drum sound so make sure that after you know in your spare time you also experiment with this when making your beats so you get more proficient and get more out of the sampler than just loading some drums and just playing them and here another thing that I wanted to mention is that you, you see the, the pitch and bend I can change that from just two semitones to 12 which would be a full octave and so on and so forth you know the bend would right now it's length so it's gonna change in at, at a one-on-one -on -one ratio but I can make it anything I want as you can see here and then down here in your modulator settings you can also alter the pitch and other settings as which would which is called the destination using a source and then your sources are down here you have your LFO 1 LFO 2 
three and your two envelopes so a dsr something that if you want to uh, do some research after working this out is uh your you have your attack decay sustain and release why the why do i want to spotlight this or highlight it it's because the EXS24, in essence, if you don't load anything, any samples or any patches, and you say no instrument, your ESX24, I don't know if you noticed that sound, already has a sound, or we create sound based on the wave or the sine wave that you have. Well, this is, this would be the sine wave, right? The default, these are different wavelengths, wavelength forms. And that's important to know because from there, you can pretty much play around with these settings, with the tune, pitch, and your modulator settings to create your own drum kit sounds and your own drum sounds, I should say. So let's say you want to create a sub bass kick or you want to create uh, bass line sounds. You can just load the default sine wave EX, EXS24 sound and when altering those around you will get you, you can create your own sounds so that's also in my view a good thing to know so that you don't just box yourself up sampling sounds and um, you create your own now before moving on to uh, laying your let's say your your normal uh, drum pattern in the in the project i wanted to also show you that the same way that i already have this part 5b and i have you can you, you notice here i have my own sound banks already you can also go down here to the factory in case you you have your garage band uh, packs installed you can you also see garage band and your your other um, own pre-saved settings you can go to here right and let's say I go to factory I'm gonna go to drums and percussion and then from here I will go to electronic drums and I will go with the 808 you notice how these settings changed right my modulator settings changed and some other settings here changed from the envelope right all I did was just add this bunch of samples to the EXX24. So that's also another way of adding samples in here. And then the same thing, you can uh, add some EQing and some effects and then save it out as, a, as your own instrument. So that's something to keep in mind also that you can from here itself uh, use some of the factory sounds and, and and drum kits and add them to the sampler and then after you modify them you pretty much create your own custom drum kit now let's go into the project with this 808 I will put that down mute this and let's lay something down uh, let's Let's keep it at two bars. Now I'm going to introduce a concept that I haven't mentioned before in my tutorials, which is the piano roll. And at this point, I was debating if I should do that because maybe you just wanted to see this video and the sample series just to learn how to use some of the different settings that you may not be an expert on. And you maybe already you know how to use the piano roll and all that. But for the benefit of those that do not know, then I'm just going to do it. So right now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change my right click or my command click i'm gonna add the the instrument there i'm gonna include a play area and then i'm gonna what i did there was just double click it to access the piano roll you can also do that by pressing p in your keyboard which is by default the piano roll shortcut and from that which I loaded 
because you have the different sounds here. So you notice when I, I press my command click that changes to a pencil and all you, you, you need to do with that is just you're just going to do a MIDI draw and then you can add your different sounds in this toolbar these two bars I should say and then sequence a, a drum pattern so right now let's see, I'll just stick with these two sounds so I'll add a kick snare kick snare let's listen to that so that right there is a pretty basic and although boring drum pattern it um, it's playing the samples that I have in my sampler it's gonna work the same way even if you use the samples from a loop or a break that you sample from a sound or samples that you drag and drop from your browser it's gonna work out the same way so right now I only have this kick and snare sound right from there and there and I can alter alter and pattern and just add a, a new kick every now and then and let's take a listen to that and then if let's see if I add a snare And in a similar way, you can add other sounds, you know, claps, hats, and all that, and lay your own drum pattern. And before I go to how to uh, later do more with that, let's let's say I have that drum pattern, but it's only one track, right? And for the purposes of panning and tuning and EQing I am anything I do on this track as far as effects and equalization panning and the volume or velocity of the notes it's gonna be attached to just that one track and it's gonna alter everything that's on the track so something that I wanted to mention that it's very easy if you wanna multi-track your your drum sounds and be able to work with them separately the kick separately and the snare separately so just select your the drum pattern that you have here right click and then go to MIDI and separate my note pitch now one note that I want to make is that doing that separates the the MIDI tracks but unfortunately whatever you do to one is gonna alter the other because it's coming from the same uh, source so to speak but that's not a problem because what you can do is that you can copy your any of these you can copy this instrument for example and now that's on its own and you can move your your sounds down there and then I can delete these other ones and now for certain I can work with them separately and it's a few more clicks but it's it's good to do because really you want to work with your your different drum sounds in different tracks so I can uh, EQ them separately let's say that's a gonna do that and then my snare sound I'm just gonna use some of the presets right and then let's say wanna pan the kick a little bit to the right and change its volume make it sound just a little a tad bit less volume than the kick let's try this sorry I want to solo the kick it's 
it's already by adding some uh, EQ and I'm changing that sound. Notice the difference when the EQ is on or off. So that's something to keep in mind and a good practice when laying down your drums. Let's listen to the snare. Hmm, I know why that that's not working. That's because I didn't copy the the correct instrument. That's not a problem. Let me just move that over here. Delete that guy. Now I'm gonna solo him. Well, I'm gonna change that to the standard EQ. Now we're gonna listen to the snare. And again, you can you notice the the difference in sound by just EQing, and then expand that to the right a little bit. Now let's listen to both together again. And it's just a very simple way to to lay your drums, right, and uh, create drum patterns. So. With that, I just wanna recap what we just learned here. We learned how to take a sampled drum. Let's refer back to part 5A. Let's say I sampled this drum, either from uh, an Apple loop library or my own custom library. And I added all of the sounds all based on the transients to the ESX24 sampler. I learned how to, we learned, I should say how to inside the XX24 sampler, alter your pitch of each note simply by making them more uh, span more than one note in the keyboard. And we also learned how to add single drum kick sounds or drum kits, drum kit sounds to the sampler by just dragging and dropping from a different folder or adding them from the zone menu and also making the different alterations. We also learned that some of the ESX24 setting controls and what you can do with them, including creating your own drum sounds. And note again, all of these also work for sounds that are not just drum sounds. It's anything that you can load into a sampler. We also learned how to go by the different factory patches or sound banks and add them also to the ESX24 sampler and how to save them as your own by going to the settings and saving as a channel strip. And we also learned how to lay down some simple drum pattern in a two, two bar loop and then separating those into the different MIDI pitches if you played everything in just one track. We also learned how to copy one one instrument, let's say that sampler, so that you can play your different drum sounds in different tracks so that you are able to equalize and uh, fine tune them, pan them, uh, change the volume separately because that's going to be pretty much the best way of doing it. From here, one thing that I just want to say is that you can also just to close this out is that I can bounce this in place and what I can to do that you select both of your MIDI tracks in this case my kick and my snare and I will go to file bounce regions in place and let's just call it drums oops hit OK and this here is my bounce, right? So if I play that again, and why do I wanted to close with that is because referring back to part A again, what I can do with that now it's selected and I can export that into a separate or a new Apple loop, just like we did in part 5A. So 
Keep that in mind. However you lay your drums, you can always bounce them in place if you want to add them as a as an Apple loop, as a custom Apple loop that you will use later. So it's a pretty neat feature. And with that, we're going to be closing the tutorial for now, part 5B. In part 5C, we're going to be talking about doing pretty much what we have done here with the sampler. Almost everything that we just saw here and a couple of new things, but with the ultra beat step sequencer. So I will see you in, in part 5C for now. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all the new videos that I release. Like, share, and comment on this video if you liked it. If you didn't, that's fair too. Leave a comment for any questions or to ask anything that, that you may have doubts on with this tutorial or previous tutorials or random topics. Make sure to follow me on, on my other social media pages in Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram, my webpage www.chloromoindustry.com and you can also contact me through my email chloromoindustries at gmail.com. Thanks for watching and listening. See you in part 5C. Peace out YouTube.